Hi, Pat here. Welcome back. I know it's been a few weeks, but I have been working on a new project. This new project includes combining 3D printed parts, acrylic, and LEDs. So as a learning exercise, I wanted to make a smaller project that combines those materials so I can get experience working with them all. So I'm making a small decorative piece that glows with my logo. Let me show you how I made it. For the LED circuit, I bought some Adafruit sequins, which are very small, flat LEDs that also have built-in resistors. So all I needed besides the sequins are some wire to connect everything and some small batteries, both of which I already had on hand. The batteries are 1.5 volts each, so I only needed two of them to meet the 3 volt requirement of the sequins. I still have a bunch of the 2.4mm acrylic left over from my picture frame video, so I used a scrap piece of that. I cut out a triangle without worrying about the size or angles. The exact dimensions don't really matter because I will design the rest of the project around this piece of acrylic. The base and housing of the project will be 3D printed, so I scanned the acrylic to an image on my computer and imported it into Fusion 360 to use as a template. After calibrating the size of the reference image, I sketched out the triangle and then extruded it to the size of the acrylic, 2.4 millimeters. I quickly added in the other internal components using primitives. I used boxes for the sequins and cylinders for the wires and batteries. After laying out the internal components for reference later, I created a box as the basic shape of the base. I made sure that the box enclosed all of the internal pieces, and then I used draft to slope the edges to the same angle as the acrylic. Finally, I chamfered the top edges to make it look a little nicer. To fit the circuit into the base, I decided to split the base into two pieces, so I created a new box that I'll use with the combine tool to do the work of splitting the piece. I used yet another box to add a lip around the top of the base so it'll all snap together for added strength. Next, I used the combine tool to cut a hole into the base so the acrylic can slide in. Then, I use the combine tool again to create the top piece, by subtracting out the bottom half and cutting a box-shaped hole in the middle where the components will go. Next, I used a copy of the top piece, with the inside faces slightly scaled smaller, and used the combine tool to cut out the final bottom piece. I used another box and combine to cut out some room for the wires and LED, and then used the wire bodies to cut grooves into the base. Then, I cut some room in the bottom for the batteries and joined those spaces together. And finally, I cut a hole from the battery section to the top so I can feed the wires through. Then, I sent the models to my 3D printer. I printed both pieces using the silver PLA filament that came with my printer from Prusa. I had a print with supports turned on, but they were hidden on the inside and they came out cleanly. To start putting together the circuit, I cut red and black wires to fit into the grooves of the base. I stripped a small section in the middle of each wire, which will connect to the battery leads. I cut two more wires, which will connect to the batteries, and twisted them onto the middle of the main wires, which I then soldered into place. I connected the sequin LEDs to the red wire first, which will be the positive connection. I cut and stripped the ends of the wires to the right size, then I soldered the LEDs to those ends. I angled the LEDs so the negative sides will be in place to connect to the black wire. Once the wires and LEDs were finished, I tested the circuit by manually connecting the battery leads to the batteries. So far, so good! Next, I stripped the battery lead wires and lightly tinned them to keep them from fraying. Then, I fit the circuit into the base and curled the battery leads, one on each side of the battery compartment. I tested again with the batteries in place. It's all still working. To connect the two batteries together on the bottom, I just used a small piece of a soda can. The inside of the cans are lined with plastic to protect the metal from the acidic soda, so I quickly used sandpaper to expose the metal. After one last test, the circuit is all done. 
In order to get the logo onto the piece of acrylic, I first printed out the logo at the right size. To transfer the logo, I put some masking tape on wax paper and then taped the logo on top of that. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut out the parts of the logo that I wanted to appear on the acrylic, making sure to cut all the way through the wax paper on the bottom. Once I cut out all the pieces, I carefully peeled off the wax paper and stuck the masking tape to the acrylic. My initial plan was to use sandpaper to rough up the acrylic, which would give it a frosted look. But because the logo was so small, I ended up using needle files. I spent some time etching the logo into the acrylic until I was happy with how it looked. Then I gave it a final once over with some sandpaper to try to smooth it out. I shined my phone light through it to make sure I liked how it looked before I finally peeled off the masking tape. I used a needle file one last time to add the antennas at the top of the buildings, and then the logo was done. I pushed the acrylic through the top piece and finished assembling everything. Unfortunately, I didn't build enough room inside the piece for it to snap together as cleanly as I wanted, so the top only goes on about halfway. But the LED successfully light up the acrylic and the logo, so that's good enough for now. So that's it. The final product works, but it didn't quite come together nearly as well as I imagined it. But that's fine, because ultimately, this was more of an experiment than a finished product. I got some good practice working with acrylic, soldering, working with small electronics, and of course, 3D printing. Probably the most important lesson I learned was to use larger tolerances when designing 3D printed parts. Everything would have fit much better together if I actually added more space. The wires would have fit into the grooves, the acrylic would have fit better into the top, and the top would have snapped nicely onto the base. Obviously, you don't want to go too far in the other direction and have everything too loose, but this time around, I definitely could have used more space around the different pieces. Oh well, lesson learned. That'll just make my larger project that much better, which was the point of the experiment. Thanks for watching, and hope you learned something from this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up on my new videos, especially if you want to see that larger project I'm still working on. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.